she was insane. Don't you see? If you're the guys who make the rules, we can break the rules. Department of Defense? Oh, yeah. Are you out of your mind? They came through with the most... Department of Defense? Oh, yeah. Are you out of your mind? They came through with the most money by far. They see it as a way to combat infectious disease. What, what are you saying? You're talking about a fast track? You're talking about tossing ethics in the garb. You're talking about warp speed. That's what you're talking about. What are you saying? You're talking about a fast track? You're talking about tossing ethics in the garbage. This is for you. No, this is for you. So that's the trailer. So what is this really about? I promise you guys we would get into the Bible today and also the Book of Enoch. What is this really about? Why are we seeing vampire, zombie symptoms associated with some kind of VC or some kind of disease? Why are we seeing that? Well, we have to ask the question, who were the first vampires? There were real vampires in history, and they're actually still running around today. You just They just don't talk about it. They are the fallen ones. And we have biblical evidence that this is so. Here's one of the first mentions in the book of Enoch. Let's read this. It says, And all the others together with them took unto themselves wives, and each chose for himself one, and began to go into them to defile themselves with them. And they taught them charms and enchantments, and cutting of roots, made them acquainted with plants. And they became pregnant. And they bore great giants whose height was 3,000 L's, who consumed all the acquisitions of men. And when men could no longer sustain them, the giants turned against them and devoured mankind. And they began to sin against birds and beasts and reptiles and fish, and to devour one another's flesh and drink the blood. See? Then the earth laid accusation against the lawless one. So there's the first clue that we get about drinking blood. These were the first vampires. They were the descendants of the fallen ones. Then again, in Numbers chapter 13, verse 32. Now this was the ancient Israelites. They had scouts. They sent them into the land of Canaan. And at that point... They came back to, to report on what they had seen. They saw a land full of giants, the same giants from the Book of Enoch, right? What were those giants doing? The very same thing. Let's read. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched under the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we had, have gone to search it, it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it were men of great stature. So they're eating each other. And eating the people that they inhabited. Then we got more biblical references to these vampires. This is Genesis 9. Now, this was just after God has had even the odds for mankind. By killing off most of the giants during the flood. Noah got off the ark. And God had killed these blood drinkers off. And, but then he told Noah and his family not to drink the blood with the life in it. This was a warning because this was a common practice. He didn't want them picking up bad habits from the fallen ones. It says here, every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. This is when God gave Noah permission to eat meat, eat animals. Just like he gave us permission to eat the green herbs, basically plants and living things. Well, now he gave us permission to eat. Now, this was almost a command. You know, um, people that are vegetarian only, that's fine. But when they start condemning others for eating meat, that's antichrist. That's an antichrist thing that you're doing because this was a command. God told Noah, every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. That's a command. Unless, of course, you can't because of, for some reason. But here's the order. Yeah, you can eat meat, but he says, but flesh with the life thereof, 
which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. So you're not supposed to, to eat the flesh with the blood in it, the live blood. He says, and, and surely your blood of your lives will require at the end of every, at the hand of every beast, will I require it. And at the hand of man, at the hand of every man's brother, will I require the life of man. So there's like an accounting that begins to take place here. So you're not allowed to just kill stuff, you know, for nothing and kill each other for nothing. There's like an accounting of that. Now, this goes on. Because basically at this point, and we have now identified that there are many places in the Bible that talk about not eating the blood. Here's more. This is where God gave the Israelites instructions not to drink the blood. This was after the flood. Hundreds or maybe even a thousand years after the flood. This is in Deuteronomy. Only be sure not to eat the blood because the blood is the life. You must not eat the life with the meat. You see that? That coincides with what Noah just was instructed to do. Same instruction. Don't drink the blood with the life in it. it says pour it on the ground like water. And here are some other scriptures as well that back that up. Instead, we should write, tell them, abstain from food polluted with idols, from sexual immorality, from the meat of strangled animals, and from blood. But you must not eat meat with the lifeblood in it. That's uh, the instruction he gave to Noah. Leviticus, you must not eat the blood of any bird or animal in your dwellings. If anyone from the house of Israel or foreigner living among them eats any blood, I will set my face against that person and cut them off from among his people. You must not any, eat anything with blood in it. So as you can see, the instruction is very, very clear. So now we know who the vampires are. It's the fallen ones in their bloodlines. They get power and life from drinking raw blood with life in it. So this is what we need to stay away from. So, let me go back here into the chat. I'm working on a film called The Boss Man, or Boss Level, and um, it's all about Osiris and going through CERN and the portal and how these vampires jump through time. You guys, when Osiris is broken up into pieces, what was that, 14 pieces and put back together? All that meant was that he was demonically possessed. The putting back together the pieces was cloning. He got cloned and the demon was able to possess him again. This is how demons jump through time. It's everything we've been talking about. So, I put together that Osiris, it's uh, Osiris thing for boss level. He's actually called Osiris in the film. Let me pull this up and read just the uh, the plot here so you can look at this. So basically, I'll give you a quick synopsis of boss level. So Mel Gibson's in it, Naomi Watts, and Naomi Watts plays the scientist. And she develops this CERN device that has ability to put people in a time loop. And she puts her ex-husband in a time loop so that he can save the world because the bad guys want to blow up the world with this device. And there's a little bit more to it than that, but I'm just giving you the cliff notes. And so her husband, she turns him into Osiris. So he can't die. Every day he wakes up, he's in a time loop. Okay, that's the, the demons and how many bodies throughout the ages. They just keep going over and over again, right? You wake up in a time loop. And since there's nothing new under the sun, everything seems to repeat for them. There are coincidences and deja vu. Because everything just repeats over and over again in these cycles. When they wake up in these new host bodies, there's all this weird synchronicity. So, he's going through this time loop and he finally gets down to the end of it after all these attempts 
because they keep killing him. And he goes through what's called the Osiris Spindle. We're going to cover all this later in the week, or next week, actually. He goes through the Osiris Spindle, which is a quantum device. It looks just like CERN. And he breaks the time loop and saves the world. Kind of a dumb movie, but it relates to everything we're talking about right now. This just released like last month. So we're going to take a look at this. But what is this spindle? Well, it's everything I was telling you guys about. Spindles is basically a yo-yo. A yo-yo is a spindle. It's the outer ring of Saturn. It's curling in on itself. It's something bound up or wound. And I begin to think about this. Osiris passing through the spindle. That's the camel passing through the eye of the needle, which God says it's almost impossible to do. A rich man passed through the eye of a needle, or getting to heaven is like a camel trying to pass through the eye of a needle. This might have to do with time and dimensions and passing through portals. Obviously, returning to heaven, you have to go through a portal. Interesting stuff, right? So we'll get into that tomorrow. I got some clips already pulled up from that. Um, I'll probably release the uh, a trailer on it later in the day or over the weekend, and then we'll do a full show on that one next week. But this is pretty interesting. So, this dovetails into everything we're talking about. I'm going through these portals and trying to figure out, these demons trying to figure out a way to basically clone the DNA from ancient pharaohs, re-inhabit and repossess these bodies. I think I just heard Bo Jiden talk about he had been he had been in the Senate for 120 years. So I went back and looked at some of these old senators from the 1900s to see if he was telling the truth. Maybe he has been alive for 120 years. You guys, anything's possible with this stuff. So we'll take a look at that. Doubt if we'll find anything. But um, there's so much more in this story than meets the eye. This is how they maintain power and control. It's not just inbreeding. It's cloning and demon possession of these bodies. Which I believe is happening. So let's go into the chat here. Thanks everybody for showing up today. And uh, tomorrow's show, they're actually admitting that even if you get the VC, you can still get CV. And now they're saying within a year that the current VC, uh, VCs that are on the market are going to be ineffective. So it's exactly what we told you guys was going to happen. Back in March of last year when all this started, I said, you know what, this is going to be an endless stream of VCs every single year. You're going to have to get them. This isn't going to end in two weeks. Very few.